Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Andy and I usually do videos on sex education on this channel, uh, which is a really good reason to stick about. But it was Valentine's Day last week and at the time I uh, thought about this video which I could do and there was lots of stuff about people behaving badly on dating apps. And it got me thinking, it's like, why are people so rude on dating apps? They obviously don't need to be. They wouldn't do it in real life. They wouldn't do it if you were dating somebody across the table from you. So why be so rude in dating apps? And it kind of occurred to me that it's partly because you're never seeing the person again, but it's kind of the culture of dating apps. Something which has uh, you hear about other people doing it and you do it yourself. I'm not really this kind of person. I tend to, if I'm messaging somebody, continue to message them and say, actually, I'm not interested or shall we go on a date? You know, one of those two things will happen if I'm having a proper conversation with somebody. But uh, there is loads of terms out there for the things that happen on dating apps. Um, so I thought, why didn't I take you through a few of them? Perhaps you've come across these situations yourself, or perhaps you're doing these and you don't realize it, and maybe maybe you should change your ways. So the first term I came across was benching. Now, uh, a lot of people might call this being put on the back burner or um, just being sidelined, you know. But the idea is, is that you put somebody on the bench. So the idea is, is that you keep your powder dry on somebody that you uh, you like, but you think you have better options. So maybe you have two or three people um, who you've already arranged dates with, um, and if none of them come to fruition, then you contact this person. You are benching them and bring them out when their other options have gone away, or off the table. It's rather like um, if you were, I don't know, uh, choosing some clothes in a clothes shop and you were like, well, I need to buy a top and a pair of trousers. And you're like, mm, maybe that one, maybe that one. And you, you pick it pick it up and put it in your basket as maybe, then you think, oh, well, there's somebody better. I'll go and put that one back. Is the equivalent of that, okay? In many ways, I think it's pretty awful. If you are trying to string them along and then you do uh, actually go and have a proper relationship with somebody and you dump them, you're kind of giving them false hope as to uh, what to expect, right? Uh, it's not, I don't think, uh, a good thing to be doing to somebody. So the next one is called deep like. Basically, it's when you match with somebody on your dating app and you somehow find their social media, uh, whether that be you know Facebook, Instagram, anything like that, and you go in and start liking all their posts. It's much more regular on things like Instagram because of course you don't have to be friends with somebody to like somebody's posts, but uh, it happens on Facebook, it happens on Twitter, you know, all sorts of things. But actually the term deep liking comes from not uh, just liking a few things on their social media, but liking things from two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, you know, where you would actually have to go and find that content before you started liking it. Some people, you know, you might have done this by accident. You're going through a friend of yours, it's like you're just lost in their thing and you like something from years ago and it's like, well, you get the notification. It's like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> if you're doing it because you've found somebody on a dating app, it's hella weird. So the next term is ghosting, and I'm sure most of you know what this is. Ghosting is, if you haven't heard of it, uh, where you talk to somebody and you uh, really kind of engage with it, uh, and then it gets to a certain point and uh, they message you and you ignore them. And they message you again a couple of days later, but perhaps they want to restart the conversation and you ignore that as well. And it might be after you've been on a date, um, it might be, uh, after they've approached you to go on a date or something like that. We all know that um, sometimes you uh, don't respond to something on social media, then you forget that the message happens. So um, it's not unlikely that somebody will prompt you if they're interested in you to respond to their previous message. But I think at that point, you've got to say, if you don't like somebody, so sorry, this isn't really working out. That's all you have to say. You don't have to ignore them completely. There is one situation where I 
uh, would be fine with somebody ghosting, and that is if they're being harassed. So if they've already said no, and uh, the other person is still coming on to them, still trying to get them to do stuff, that's the time when ghosting's fine, and you know, when you can end the conversation. Most apps, you can stop the conversation and match with somebody. But doing that um, after you've been talking for a little while, um, just because you don't really want to talk to them anymore, is a bit rude, isn't it? This isn't quite so clear cut, but sometimes you might be asked over to Netflix and chill. Uh, now, if you are asked to Netflix and chill, that usually means that you're asked to come over and have some sex. Now, firstly, just because you've asked somebody to come over and Netflix and chill doesn't mean that you are consenting to sex and it doesn't mean that you uh, can't withdraw consent to sex, okay? I'd just like to say that up before I go anywhere. However, if you are inviting someone to come and Netflix and chill, do not be surprised if they ask for sex because that's what it means. If you don't know that, that's what it means. It doesn't mean watching Netflix. Well, you might want to watch Netflix, but the chill bit. <laughs> just so you know, all right? <laughs> Another term which I found while researching for this video is breadcrumbing. And I hadn't heard this before, but uh, apparently it's kind of throwing out little tidbits to somebody to keep them um, alive. Probably flirtatious, probably um, making it sound like you're interested, but it's like the minimum amount of effort to keep somebody chatting to you on, on the apps. and. Uh, I don't really know why you do this. If you like somebody, then ask them on a date. And if you don't like somebody, say so and a match. I don't get this just keeping them on the end of a lead. I suppose for some people it's about control and I can, you know, I understand that, but I, I, I don't really understand why you would do this on a dating app. So uh, you've heard of ghosting, uh, I've told you about it, but have you heard of haunting? Uh, haunting is uh, where you have gone on a date or you've gone on a couple of dates uh, and you've decided not to see each other anymore. And then a couple of months later, you haven't managed to unmatch on the app or you've got some other way of contacting them, text, whatever. And uh, you turn up again saying, ooh, wouldn't it be nice to, you know? And it's like, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of haunting from your past, especially actually if the breakup's been a non-acrimonious breakup for some reason. It's pretty rude, in my opinion, to co go back to that. And it's called haunting for that reason. And the last definition I have for you is catfishing. And catfishing, as we all know, is a horrible thing. If you're not aware of the term, catfishing is usually where women who are talking to men on the dating apps, uh, it's usually that way around, um, where women uh, try and lead a man on, but not because they want to have a relationship with them, but they want something else. They want either some financial gain or to send them presents or um, just to mug them out some money. It's the old Nigerian uh, winner of a lottery trick, right? Uh, you, if you ever get an email about from a Nigerian prince saying, I've got lots of money, you just need to put it through your bank account. We all know that's a scam, right? Well, this is exactly the same thing. It's where, oh yes, I'd really like to meet you, all the rest of it. Oh, by the way, I haven't got a lot of money. Can you transfer me 50 pounds? <laughs> no, no. Don't ever do that, all right? If you ever get a message like that, immediately say, go away and unmatch. Maybe don't even say go away. Maybe just unmatch. You know what? Ghosting's, that's a good, that's a good reason to ghost. When you get that, it's like unmatch immediately and report them, report them to the app. Do all the things which, <laughs> it's a horrible thing, right? And it's usually called catfishing because it's uh, a, what is termed a cat, so a woman, is fishing for things. They, they do it to everybody. They will match on more or less everybody. And what they're looking for are people who don't match with many uh, other people on the app at all. Uh, so that if they do get some messages and it seems good, then they can um, trip them into sending money or 
gifts or whatever. It's from before dating apps. It's the oldest trick in the book, but it's happening more and more because these things are so much easier than they used to be. So I don't know if you've done any of these or any of these have happened to you. If they have, leave your story in the comments and share it with us all. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. You can do that just down below. I make videos more or less every single week on this channel about sex education and relationships and welfare topics. So it's a great reason to subscribe and click the little bell so that you are notified when I next upload. And I will therefore see you again next time. Bye-bye.